Hey guys, Rich Ferguson here, and everyone needs to know how to do a card trick. So this week, I'm gonna be releasing some of my favorite card tricks each day this week. So make sure you're subscribed to my video and you turn on your notifications so you never miss an upload and so you're eligible for the giveaways. We're gonna do a giveaway for each video, and these are great card tricks where you don't need to be a master magician and you will impress your friends. Let's do this. All right, Eric, this is the trick. The trick that's so advanced looking. It's, there's no explanation for it. And it's the trick that I've taught a few of my favorite friends who are like, you gotta show me one great trick. This is the go-to trick because it's, I cannot express, guys, I cannot express enough. Watch to the end of this thing. Try this trick out. It is mind blowing, all right? So to begin with, I'm gonna shuffle the cards like this perfectly. You can see that's an absolute yeah. mess. Uh -huh. So obviously, you can see these are not in any particular order, okay? It's very important to start off with you knowing that. Here's what you're gonna do, pick a card, okay? So I'm gonna cut the deck in half. I'm gonna give you half and I'm gonna take half. And that half's just gonna stay there for a moment. Okay. And what you're gonna do is just take any card. Just take one. Doesn't even matter, just, just take it okay. and remember it. Yeah, you got it? Okay, yep. put it back in here. All right, perfect. Now here's what you're gonna do. Take those and put them behind you. Don't disturb them, just sit on them, hide them so I can't get to them. I'll sit on them. Okay, that's fine. And now we're gonna do the impossible. Well, you, have a, you have a particular card out of a deck that's been shuffled up. I don't know what it is. There's some cards right here that have also been mixed up. We're gonna try something that it should not be possible. And is it, is it gonna be influence? Is it mind control? Is it luck? I mean, at the end, you're just gonna wonder, what if I would've went to the next card? Just watch this. So you have the other pack right here. And what you're gonna do is deal onto the table and stop whenever you want. And that card is gonna tell us the, exactly the location of your chosen card in the deck that you're sitting on. Sound impossible, right? No way. So we'll see if it's luck, mind control, card counting, influence, who knows. Go ahead and deal. Face down on the table, stop whenever you want. Stop whenever I want. Stop when we're gonna okay. see what happens. We'll see how it goes. Right okay, there. you stop right here. You stopped us on a seven, right? Okay. A card before would have been a three. Okay. The card after would have been a four. Okay. It can't be more fair. Would you agree? I'd agree. Watch this. Let's see the seventh card. Mind blowing. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, baby. Let's see, let's see. Let's see the seventh card right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, come on. Flip it up, flip, flip it, it over, flip, flip it over, baby, flip it up. Oh, tell me it's it. That's crazy. Tell me it's it. That's right. That's it, that's, that's it. Right. That's crazy. It's that's, so that's good. That's a good one. It's that's so good. good one. It's weird, I don't like tricks, you guys, when there's lots of piles and do this, follow these rules. This is an exception because it's so powerful at the end. The convincer is this. The next card would have been a four. The previous one would have been a three. That sells it. That alone makes your head hurt. You're like, what? I'm yeah. gonna teach you the trick. And you guys, I'm begging you, please check out the whole trick. Watch all these. This is so cool. Here we go. The setup is devious, okay? Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can start the deck off with the sixes and the sevens all together on top or you can pull them out of the deck right in front of the person. And I'll show you that version because it's way more advanced. And for those few people that are watching this that are really into magic, I think you're gonna really enjoy this. So check this out. So let's just say the deck is all shuffled up. What you're gonna do is go through the deck looking for the jokers. And you're looking for the jokers, but what you're really doing is pulling out the sixes and the sevens. And what you're doing is shifting them upwards about half the length of the card. And no one's gonna really know what you're doing because you're not facing it toward them. This is like this, I'm looking for the jokers and you're going through the deck like this. And what you're gonna do is spin those cards off and that's all the sixes and sevens from the deck. They're gonna go on top. Now what I prefer is honestly the sevens to be second and the sixes to be first. And you'll see why as we go through this trick, why this is an advantage because the seven is the special number. The six works perfectly too, but I'm gonna walk you through what happens. But long story short, all you have to do is get a deck of cards, take the sixes and sevens out, put them on top. They could even be mixed up. It truly does not matter. And that is the setup. Then you can take the cards out and proceed with the trick. Now to start with, I like to shuffle them up. But again, this is just a false shuffle. On the top, my finger overhangs just a little bit. So I'm never even disturbing the top 15, 20 cards. And then I shuffle and it looks very legit, and then we proceed. To start with, I'm gonna weave them together by doing this very specific thing. The deck right here has the sixes and sevens, this does not. This goes on top by one card. 
So I'm going to put one card on top and then I'm going to weave the rest perfectly. And then I'm going to shuffle it together. Now what does that do? That causes the setup to be exactly the way it needs for the trick to be self-working from this moment forward for the most part. The setup is this, a random card, a six or a seven, a random card, a six or a seven, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can see the pattern here. The sixes and sevens repeat all the way through for about 16 cards. So even if you do this, you can show someone that the cards are in no particular order. But in fact, they are in a very specific order. Now I will let you know, you can start off the deck like this. If you're afraid of all these special moves, you can start off the pack with it pre-set up with a random card, a six or a seven, a random card, a six or a seven, etc., etc., all the way down to there. So let's just say for sake of argument, you fast forward to this moment and you bring them out of the card case, boom, I want to show you a trick. You turn to your friend and you can start off just like this. We're going to cut the deck in half and we're going to do something that should be impossible. You've heard of people that can locate a card via like a signal or a key card or like card counting. We're going to do something that, that shouldn't be impossible and I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I'm influencing you. I'm influencing your decisions and you can disguise it any way you want. So you cut off the deck. The top half goes right here and that is the one that's got the stack of the sixes and the sevens all set up. Leave that aside. Take the regular cards that are truly just random cards and turn to the person and count one, two, three, four, five, six in your mind. 50% of the time they're going to take the seventh card if you're saying, do me a favor, reach into the deck and just take a card. Just go ahead and take one. They're going to time it to about that card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If they don't, it doesn't matter. This is just a bonus because it's convenient if they were to take that card and it's right there, I would say, look at that card and I put it back exactly as is. So in this case, that card is the five of diamonds. So it's going to go right there. I know this sounds long-winded, but bear with me because I'm telling you, this is almost there and you're going to have this epiphany of like, oh my God, six cards. This is the seventh card. If they don't pick this card from that position, take it, please. Let's just say you picked it from way down here. Go ahead and pull the card out. There okay. you go. Take it out. Let's say you chose that card. Take a look at it, please. What I've done is I've split the deck at the six mark. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six wow. cards. I count to myself, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have my fingers underneath it right here, ready to go. No matter what, I'm breaking it right here. Take a look at the card, remember it? Put it back in the deck, there you go. Put these on top. Long story short, all that has to happen is their chosen card must be the seventh card. Do me a favor, if you just reach in and take a card. Just take one, doesn't matter which one. Just, oh, the bottom one, okay, great. Here, do me a favor, take a look at it. You got it? Here, put it back in. I'm just sticking these six cards back on top, okay? So if they take a card and they've gone way beyond it, or if you even forgot to count right and you're not sure if you have five or seven, square them up and as they're looking at it, just count to yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six, as they're looking at their card. Seventh card, it goes here. It's squared up, and then here's the trick. The rest is self-working. Your card's in here, I don't know what it is. Can you hide these so I can't get to them? Like sit on them? Absolutely. Perfect. Now these cards are sitting right here, they haven't been touched, they've been shuffled. You're gonna deal the cards under the table and stop whenever you want. Wherever you stop, the card is going to determine the location of your card. Now guys, it's very important you understand what I just said. You're going to deal the cards onto the table and stop whenever you want, all true. The card, I never said what card, I said the card. That's very important. I'm not going to say the card you stop at. See, there's a discrepancy there. I said the card is going to determine exactly the location of the card that you're sitting on. Everything I say is true when it's worded that way because here's what's going to happen. You guys, you know the card's the seventh card, right? Random card, a six or a seven. Random card, a six or a seven. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. But all I know is that is the sixth or seventh card because of the wording. So watch this. The top card, if you set it up right, is a card that's not the sixth or the seventh. So in my mind, when he deals it, I just tell myself, nope. And then I tell myself, self, yep, <laughs> nope, yep, nope, yep, nope, yep, nope, yep. If he stops right there and he's done, I know that's a yep. <laughs> so I know that's a six or a seven. So all I do is say, let's take a look at the card you stopped at. Everything's exactly the way it should be. And I go, okay, what is it? Ooh, it's a seven, right? Just like it was before. I'll say, oh, yeah. check this out. The previous card would have been a one. The next card would have been a four. That's what kills it because it's every other card. So you know that the previous and the next card is free to look at. 
That's why this is so kick ass, right? So we know that's a six or seven. In this case, it's a seven. So I tell you, let's look at the seventh card and you deal, boom, it's their card, right? But watch this, let's back up in time. Let's just say he stopped right here. And I was a yep and turn it over and it's a six. I'm still very happy because I go, ooh, a six, watch this. The previous card would have been a 10. The next card would have been an eight, but you stopped on a six. Take out your cards, deal off six cards right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, stop. If that's your card, this would be a freaking miracle. See what I just did? I completely changed the rules of the game. I never said it's gonna be the card you stop at. I never said this is gonna be there or here, or that's gonna be here or there. It leaves it ambiguous so you can alter it depending on what you need to do. I know that sounds like a lot first time, you guys, but trust me on this. This is probably the most advanced, mind-blowing trick you can ever pull without having to know sleight of hand and years of mastering body language and card control. Now, one last thing. What if he didn't stop there? What if he stopped here and he went, nope, and he stopped. And I know that's the six or seven. This is some random card. This is it. Same thing. I never said it was going to be here or there. So he's dealing and he stops. And I go, okay, let's see where you stopped at. Ooh, he stopped at a six. Look, the next card or the previous card would have been a 10. The next one would have been a eight. Pretty damn free yeah, choice, right? right? You're exactly back to where you are. So. Point being, it could be here or here, here or here. It doesn't matter because you're in full charge of the six and the seven situation. It's ambiguous on purpose. And this, my friends, is a mind blower. You can do this with seven, eight, nine, tens, whatever you want. But I find sixes and sevens are perfect because of the length of which you can count off six and let's say here, put it in here. It's just a nice depth that you know that you can control. Um, there's no need to make it more complex than it needs to be. But that's it, you guys. I really hope you watch this. I really hope you do it. Now see the next few videos because the next few clips because these are going to be some simple, simple tricks. But this is my absolute favorite. Thank you guys so much. Give it a big thumbs up. Thumbs awesome. All right, guys. I really hope you enjoyed these card tricks. I'm telling you, just try them. Go through the motions of doing them. They don't take a lot of sleight of hand, so you don't have to spend hours or years in front of a mirror. I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I'm going to give away one of my custom pack of playing cards along with a 32-page tutorial on some tricks you can do. So just comment down below and let me know you've liked this video. Let me know you've shared this video. And please make sure you're a subscriber and you turn on your notifications so you never miss my uploads midweek. And that's it, guys. I want to give big props to my friend Eric for coming and letting me do some mind tricks on him. And uh, that's it. So I'll catch you guys next week. Peace out.